Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching India Fights Back with the host Rajat Kane. Well, it's a show which gets you latest on how India and the world is preparing against COVID-19 pandemic, where UK and Russian scientists are teaming up for clinical trial of combination of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and Sputnik V vaccine candidate. The aim is to see how the mixing of two similar vaccines could lead to a better immune response in people. Well, to understand the science behind this move further and how it will help India, if at all, we are joined with two eminent guests, Dr. Rakesh Agrawal. He is director from JIPMER Puducherry and Dr. Raman R. Ganga Kherkar. He is from ICMR. Well, many thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, let me start with you, Dr. Rakesh, Rakesh Agarwal, sir. Uh, is it for the first time that we are seeing that two similar sort of vaccines are being combined to test for its efficacy or is it a usual phenomenon when we're looking to roll out vaccine or to have vaccine at a faster pace? Thanks, Rajat, for asking me to be with uh, you on this show. Thanks, sir. It's not really usual. We don't really usually do this. Mm -hmm. For instance, when we give, uh, you know, a DPT vaccine, a person receives three doses of similar vaccines. Okay. Sometimes they may be from different manufacturers, but still mm -hmm. the material is the same. Right. But for COVID, right. we're making vaccines which use very different materials, which are very different. Mm -hmm. However, it's a bit like, you know, uh, body develops immune response to one vaccine, but body also develops immune response to the other vaccine. Okay. Ultimately, all all vaccines are supposed to induce antibodies against the same virus. Hmm. But these could be slightly different antibodies. And if we use a combination of those, then it is possible that we get two slightly different responses, which okay. will be synergistic, which will work together. Hmm. It's a bit like using an army. You have tanks at the same time you have infantry. They are slightly different, but mm. not. But both are trying to act against the same enemy. And the difference in COVID is that we are developing using many different strategies to develop vaccines and therefore mm. we have many vaccines possible and we are trying to combine those. But please let me, I hope your viewers are clear that when mm. we are trying to say mixing vaccines, it's not that in one syringe we are going to two vaccines absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah, or yeah. give or give two vaccines of different times one mm -hmm. in one arm and one in the other no we give mm -hmm. when we are giving two doses we give the first dose of one kind of vaccine okay and the second dose will be of the second kind of vaccine and mm -hmm. together they would uh, you know give us a good immune response in case of covid we have a specific reason because we are using carriers we are using adenoviruses but i think we can discuss that as we go along Right, right, right. Absolutely, sir. Many thanks for your opening remarks. Let me go off to uh, Dr. Ganga Kherka. Sir, many thanks. Uh, sir, uh, this move, as you see by both the British and the Russian authorities, although, uh, I mean, we, we, we are yet to see how successful it can be. Uh, is, it, is it under, I won't say a pressure, but is it in a race towards rolling out vaccine as early as possible and also as you face the pandemic? Although in certain countries it's on the flattening curve, but but there is still the race towards having the vaccine or the right vaccine. Is it so, sir? No, I, I would perhaps feel otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, one needs to understand mm -hmm. that one of the rate limiting steps in COVID vaccines is number of dosages that you can produce. Mm -hmm. You have large number of candidates who would perhaps be approved at different time point. Okay. Right. And then you have another important issue in operation, operationalizing, scaling up or delivery of these vaccines. That mm -hmm. is people tend to move from one place to another. Okay. So it is quite possible if you consider mm -hmm. all these aspects, let's assume I was receiving an X vaccine. I received X vaccine uh, today. And mm. then on the 28th day, whenever I am supposed to take the next vaccine, I have gone to another place where okay. they don't have this vaccine. Now, mm. can I can I substitute this vaccine and ensure that I don't have 
any kind of disadvantage or perhaps mm-hmm. i would not use the protection as much mm-hmm. is a question which they will have to answer. right right now fortunately for us these are two vaccines which are using adenoviruses mm-hmm. and therefore it is possible for them to come up with such a solution where you know they would be in a better position to to ensure that the delivery occurs to as many mm-hmm. as possible and the protection levels could be high hmm right 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 uh, so b- before i go off to uh, dr agrawal just uh, just one supplementary question to you dr ganga kelkar now as uh, we have seen that the, the process of the clinical trial itself is fairly voluminous a lot of data is analyzed now will this the combined test of both the candidate vaccine will it also increase uh, the data for the for the experts to study and then arriving at the decision i know there are efficacy questions about it as well no i agree but this is a futuristic step no it assumes as the first assumption mm-hmm. that both the vaccines are going to get approval okay because of their uh, efficacy as well as uh, their toxicity profile mm-hmm. and then uh, if that happens they are looking at tomorrow where you know you're not very certain how many dosages where you are trying to think in terms of you know mm-hmm. in any case when rate limiting steps is number of dosages that uh, a vaccine manufacturer can produce mm-hmm. you might find that uh, there would be a cafeteria kind of an approach when it comes to even uh, ensuring the whether the vaccine has to be provided free of cost there would mm-hmm. be some people who might be allowed no if since they can purchase it could mm-hmm. be available even in in the pharmacies as such if mm-hmm. that happens no you need to have different permutations and combinations that could be possible to mm-hmm. ensure that just the movement of a person or introduction of uh, a vaccine or the, there are there are no stores of uh, let's say those vaccines because these are multi dose uh, vials any kind of issue that might arise can possibly be covered up in this manner so it will take time to mm-hmm. undertake trial but unless you think today before before the vaccine is approved you will perhaps lose more time once they are accepted and put into program mode mm. right 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 uh, well, dr agrawal uh, you mentioned that it's uh, not very often that we see the two different vaccines are being cross mixed to produce a more effective solution to it now uh, so i know it, it's it's important to explore the potential of vaccine combinations but here it's it's we are in a unique situation considering it's the pandemic happens to be fairly vast here uh, if at all uh it uh, it it uh, it passes the efficacy and toxicity test so what is scenario we're looking at what the positive side of such a move no uh, it is not that we have not combined vaccine polio okay. is a classic example okay at one time in our country we used to use oral polio <laughs> which is yes. given two drops you would have heard about it multiple yes, doses absolutely yeah yeah no that has some limitations some mm-hmm. things that vaccine cannot do currently we are giving our children an ipv an in, okay uh, an inactivated polio virus which is given as injections as well as giving opv mm-hmm. because the two provide very different kinds of strengths and we are using them together so as to gain from them mm-hmm. here you know dr ganga khedkar talked about interchangeability yes, you can yeah, get yeah. one one and one of another which mm. is by itself a so but you know what these companies are trying to do is much more than just interchangeability okay the idea is total number of doses will remain let's say two mm-hmm. but you get one one and one of the other and the combined effect is more than just the sum of the effects of two okay. they are supra so the issue, that is what is being planned so mm. just let's think that both of these are trying to deliver a protein of the virus inside my human body yeah that is done using a 
an adenovirus. So it's a bit like adenovirus is a bit like an envelope or a box into which the protein is put and that is used to send it into my body. Mm -hmm. When you give first dose, the body recognizes the box. It, for okay. instance, says, oh, this is a FedEx envelope and yeah. this, is, this is something foreign and I'm not going to accept another one coming. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, second time you send, you put it in a UPS uh, envelope and send mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. The body now does not uh, accept the protein and now you get a much better immune response. Because okay. the first dose, the carrier, the adenovirus by itself, antibodies develop to it and the second dose does not work very well. Mm -hmm. So what they are trying to do is, because the inside protein is the same in the Oxford vaccine and in the Sputnik vaccine, but the carrier or the cover is different, mm -hmm. they are trying to fool the body by using two different boxes First time it comes, it goes into the body. Second mm -hmm. time, body tries to think that this is something out coming from outside. Okay. Now you fool it by putting it inside another virus. So, mm -hmm. Putnik already had two human adenoviruses. They had two okay. doses given in different adenoviruses. Adenovirus okay. 26 and adenovirus 5. Mm -hmm. Oxford had it in the chimpanzee adenovirus. Now what they are going to do is, there would be one dose given using the chimpanzee adenovirus. One, mm -hmm. The other dose will be using one of the two human adenoviruses that are there in the Sputnik vaccine. Mm. It's a win-win situation if it works. If it okay. works, we are trying to see that if there are two separate vaccines have 90% efficacy each, yes. yeah, yeah. if we combine one dose of this and a few weeks later the second dose coming from the second vaccine, yeah. can we get more than 90% protection? Can we get 95, mm. 96, 98% and for that matter 99% protection? That is what mm. they are doing. Unfortunately, this has not happened in the past. Pharma companies have stuck to their stable. We have our vaccine. We are selling. Mm -hmm. The other company says we have ours and we are selling. This kind of cooperation between competitors is something that we are seeing for the first time. And I think it's a very positive sign. This mm -hmm. shows that people are looking at pandemic differently. They are thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. They are trying think of humanity they are trying to say we have something with us we have something with us it's a bit like two shopkeepers yeah one makes chana and the other makes batura and they decide one day to come together and mm -hmm. the two together would send much more okay the two together will be much more useful to people and that's what we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. so i think it's a game changer and right now what we are talking about today rajat is the two vaccines which are both using the adenovirus. Mm -hmm. People are already thinking of and working towards this technology. This technique in uh, biology is called prime boost technology. You prime okay. with one vaccine and then you boost, boost with the with other. The other. Right. These are both adenovirus vaccines, but people are even thinking, for instance, that you give the first dose in the form of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which is a adenovirus vaccine. The second dose could be of an mRNA vaccine. Okay. The examples of which include the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, India is also trying to make its own uh, yeah. virus, uh, mRNA uh, vaccine. So the idea is not just interchangeability, but to get effect more than what two doses of one vaccine can. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Agarwal, thanks uh, for uh, the explanation in terms of both microbiology and a simple analogy. Uh, Dr. Ganga Kedkar, let me understand one thing here. Uh, uh, there will be two doses even after the vaccine is combined, two separate doses, and there will be an interim period. Is any any chances in terms of, if say, I'm not expert in microbiology, but for the viewers to understand, will there be any chances that, I mean, the between the two doses of two separate vaccine, of course, they, they'll be used in combination, Will there be any sort of a firewall as we as we use the term in IT or rather uh, say any any immunity between the two that can that can possibly impact the uh, the overall efficacy? Um, uh, though I, I must admit that I didn't get completely what you are saying. Okay, okay let me just rephrase uh, it. Let me just yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you are talking in terms of protection between two dosages that Absolutely. would exist. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we currently do not have that kind of data that is available mm -hmm. for uh, these both the vaccines. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you know, if you you were to think in terms of 
um, uh, Pfizer's vaccine, we mm-hmm. know by 11th or 12th day, no, mm-hmm. perhaps people tend to have uh, a fairly large number of people would have adequate immunity by then, okay. but still a second dose would be required. Mm-hmm. We need to look at that entire data and then decide as to mm-hmm. how we will move given the fact that dosages are being advocated and what sort of protection. But whatever it is, if you are going to provide two dosages, if you are going to use two dose vaccine, they must continue to follow the COVID appropriate behavior rigorously, whether mm. they are protected or not protected, because mm. you can't just believe that yes, one would be protected just because we received one dose of a vaccine. Hmm. You get a point, right, get right, a- right. Yeah, Mr. Agarwal, here, uh, if we if we broad base uh, this issue and talk in terms of the production of the vaccine units or candidate vaccine units, and therefore the logistics issue, uh, will it will it have uh, what sort of an impact are you looking at at uh, in India? I mean, if if this combination is approved, so will it help us logistically, considering we have a fairly vast population and we and of course that in itself poses challenges. So more the vaccine the better for, for, for India? No, uh, it's a bit difficult to say right now what mm-hmm. impact this would have on the production capacity and availability of vaccine. Okay. Because India, it seems, we'll have both these vaccines being produced. The two that we are talking about, Oxford mm-hmm. AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca, which Serum Institute Sputnik of India is one. producing, yeah. and the Sputnik, which uh, Dr. Reddy's lab is going to mm-hmm. make. So if we are going to have both, Uh, And we need two doses, whether they are two from the same vaccine or one from one vaccine and one from the other. It appears to me that we are not going to gain in terms of the number of people we will be able to vaccinate. Hmm. However, one will need to see it is possible that when we combine, if the combined effect is much more than what each vaccine's two doses can give, then there is a possibility that we can reduce the dose. And then Hmm. the same production could be given to more people. But I think... It's too early. This will be very speculative as of today, and I wouldn't like to speculate. Absolutely, the absolutely. The main yeah, aim, yeah. as I said earlier, is to achieve a percentage protection which is more than that of two doses of either of the vaccines. Hmm. Can we combine two so as to? So in medicine, we have several examples. So the common drug called Ceftran. There are mm-hmm. two separate drugs within the same capsule within the same tablet. And they work on two consecutive steps and then the total effect of those two is more than that of if you take individual effect of each drug and add that up. So that is what we are looking at. We are not looking at, you know, saving the vaccine or increasing the sales or anything. It's purely biology. And that's very interesting. It's very interesting. It's going to be something, uh, you know, that hasn't been done before. And as a clinician, as a biologist, I am really looking forward to it. Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, certainly, like uh, as as we are talking about that, this is this is something which is new. Or uh, there has been an analogy of that. It's like cross training of two athletes, and I mean, and, and try and getting okay, fine. If we have a better athlete here, whereas uh, this is not just in athletics. It's uh, there is a human cost involved to it. Uh, so, uh, th- uh, one very hypothetical question here. Like you both are experts here. Let me start with you, Dr. Agarwal. Very often do we get this impression or we hear that will the vaccine would mean end of the pandemic or we are finally secure or do we have to continue with other behavioral aspects as well like, I mean, no, we're wearing of face masks and social distancing. Is it really required after, will it be required that after weather? No, uh, we don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, all these things are proof of the pudding, lies in eating kind of a situation. We'll have to see over time. But mm-hmm. at least for the initial several months, I think mm-hmm. we need to continue. These are, again, additive measures. Mm-hmm. Each of these works together. Mm-hmm. We have a vaccine, let us say, for hepatitis. Mm-hmm. Would we still say that we would be willing to drink dirty water, unclean water? No. Yeah. We would drink, we would like to drink Hmm. clean water Hmm. and whatever escapes Hmm. through to be taken care of by the immunity induced by the vaccine. Hmm. Same is true for everything, right? We combine multiple measures uh, to make ourselves safer. 
Okay. Hmm. Uh, let us take uh, uh, another example. Hmm. If I injure myself, I have a wound. I like to clean the wound so that if there are any tetanus bacteria in it, they are removed, and hmm. then I take a tetanus vaccine. Right. Would anybody say that just because we have a tetanus vaccine, we don't need to clean the wound? No. Absolutely. No. So I think that's where we are. With time, these will have hmm. to go back off gradually. They will not go away relatively quickly. All these measures will, for the timing, need to continue. Hmm. Yeah, Dr. Ganga Kherka, you also agree that vaccine perhaps may not be the end of it. We also have to continue with all the behavioral aspects that we are uh, we are continuing so as to uh, have immunity around. No, I would always agree to that for some other reasons. Hmm. Uh, the current vaccine trial designs hmm. tend to show you better information right. with respect to its ability to prevent severe disease hmm. or milder disease as well you know, to some extent in some of the trials mm -hmm. and we also know that there could be asymptomatic infection okay. which could occur in an individual mm -hmm. because these people or not all the parties trial participants were subjected to doing rt-pcr periodically at any given okay. point in time okay no it was just that did you to find out whether mm -hmm. the person had a severe disease, was he hospitalized and that kind of approach has been used. Mm -hmm. So it would essentially mean that even if I receive vaccine, there is still a likelihood that I should not be trust fully in the protective efficacy. When I say 90% protective efficacy, it mm -hmm. is 90% of the people will not develop severe symptomatic kind of a disease mm -hmm. and therefore you know, it is possible that though I receive vaccine, I could still acquire infection. For an individual, it may be a good news that okay. he will not land up into hospital. But mm -hmm. can he be spreading this infection further? We still don't have sufficient data. The early mm -hmm. indications tend to suggest that the ability of uh, the virus to spread may be limited if they develop milder disease. But these are purely speculative kind of uh, inferences based right. on whatever little data that is currently available out of these vaccine trials. Right. Well, on that so note, one, yeah. sure. please, sir, please, please continue. Must, sir. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yeah. So I'm sorry one, to must, you know, one must actually, to yeah. my mind, uh, another one, one and a half years time, Okay. Until the time all these trials are conducted, we mm -hmm. will have good information on its ability to protect against acquisition of the virus as well as development of mild and asymptomatic virus uh, infection. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we will have to continue to use mask and the okay. COVID appropriate behavior. Well, on that, that note, uh, we'll, we'll close the show. And many thanks, uh, Dr. Ganga Kherkar and Dr. Agrawal for joining us and elucidating on this very important aspect. The primarily being the combination of two vaccines, perhaps for the first, not for the first time, but not very often do we see that two vaccines, of course, having a same mix would be, would be combined to test the efficacy. And of course, how will it impact the production that is, that is for the future to see? And also, well, till the time, we have a vaccine and of course, even after having the vaccine, the COVID appropriate behavior should be followed for at least an year. That's what the expert says. Now, before we sign off, we once again request our viewers. It's a RSTV appeal. Please wear face masks, maintain social distancing, keep washing hands, 20 seconds at least. And physical distance is absolutely must for six feet. These are three things that can help us in defeating the pandemic.